Welcome to Open Door Online. A very warm welcome to everyone who's watching. My name is Dave Nunn and I'm one of the leaders here at Open Door. My job this morning is just to introduce the service and also to give some notices, a new innovation for us um, in, on our online service. First of all, um, if you've not already tuned into our children's YouTube channel, can we just encourage you to do that. It's on from about 8.30 every Sunday morning now. Um, it's getting very, very good reviews, 20 minutes of worship, Bible stories, fun and activities um, really going down well. Also last week we um, showed the video for the Catalyst offering and just to let you know that in this last week over £360,000 has been raised to help those in need across the world. Um, we were able to contribute a thousand pounds towards that and we're very grateful to be able to do that. Also this week I've had a um, letter from Sam Amara from Lagos and he just especially wanted me to send his love to Open Door Church and just as he was describing some of the challenges of being locked down in Lagos. So Sam sends his love to us. Also, could we encourage you to read the weekly letter that we're sending out? It's full of all sorts of information. This week it contained information of our special offering, which we took back in March, which raised over £12,000. Also, it contains information of our own fellowship fund, which enables us just to give um, look after those in need in open door and unfortunately we're anticipating we may need to draw on that more in the next few months. Also has details of all our weekly prayer meetings etc. In a moment I'm going to hand over to Peter and Ruth who will lead us through our worship and then we'll be watching a video from Michael Faulkner from Yalova in Turkey just talking about his work there. Um, over these next few weeks, we'll be drawing in different people um, to around the world just to tell us of their work. Um, next week, it will be Gina reporting on her trip to Ghana recently. So I'm going to hand over to Pete and Ruth now, and then it'll be Michael Faulkner, and then Adrian will be carrying on our series, Kit Seeds of the Kingdom. We're looking forward to God meeting with us today as we sit in our front rooms, sit maybe on our beds and dwell in the presence of our great and magnificent God. God bless. Over to Pete and Ruth. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so let's uh, all stand together. We're going to sing now. Um, if, you're, if you're new, if you've never seen anything like this before uh, and this is your first time here, then uh, you're probably wondering why, why are we going to sing, what we're going to sing about, uh, and what is this all about. So basically, we are going to sing our love and thanks to God. Those of us who know him are thankful and we love him. And um, it's, it's worship. So what worship is, is all about is deliberately recognising that our God is of infinite worth, uh, that he deserves praise and glory. Um, because he is the creator of the universe and vaster beyond all things that we can imagine and that he personally loves me, loves Ruth, loves you um, so when you couple those two things together you, you've got to express that somehow um, and so we're going to express that by singing uh, so that's what it's all about just before we do uh, sing though, uh, I'm going to pray um, so yeah, feel free to uh, say Amen to the, the bits you agree with um, yeah, thank you thank you Jesus uh, for the firm foundation that you are uh, we know that because of your death and your resurrection we are promised everlasting life and we're promised that in total perfect face to face union with God um, God, and it's not just it's not just pie on the sky when we die. It's it's steak on the plate while we wait. <laughs> um, you know, while we wait in this life, you give us your spirit. Uh, you lead us and you guide us, and you've promised that you will never leave us or forsake us. And we love you for that, Jesus. We love you for that, God. Uh, and we want to express our love to you now. Uh, so receive our worship. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to sing for our first song, we're going to sing In Christ Alone. Uh, one, because uh, I really like the song. I never get tired of celebrating uh, Jesus' birth, uh, his, his death and his, his glorious resurrection and all that that means. Uh, but two, because I want us to recognise that it's only in following Jesus that we have a full hope for the future and, and, and an abundant life in the present. Um, to give your life to anything else is it's a temporary thing and that will let you down. <laughs> but with Jesus we can say there's no guilt in life, there's no fear in death and it's in Christ alone, only him, it's in Christ alone that we have that assurance, it's in Christ alone that our hope is found.
are everything to us. We give our lives to you. And as we worship, Holy Spirit, would you come and meet us? Would you come and minister to us? We love your presence and we need it.
promise worth. Nothing and no one compares to you. And Jesus, we want our eyes to be fixed on you every single day of our lives. We want you to be the one who is leading and directing our steps. We want to be in the centre of your will. For you are a good and perfect friend. And God, you are a good and perfect father. Father, I thank you that in your word it says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Yeah. You are with us wherever we are, wherever we go. And your word also says that you lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, you guide them. You turn darkness into light before them and you make the rough places smooth. I thank you for that hope and I thank you for that promise, Jesus. You are so good. Jesus, be the centre, be my source, be my light.
Isn't it so good to know him? Isn't it so good to belong to him? Uh, if you don't know him, you really need to get to know him. Uh, we are now going to uh, pass over to um, our friend Mikhail um, in Yalova, uh, who's got a message for us. Hello, dear brothers and sisters in Kettering. Many greetings from Yalova, Turkey. First, we have some family news. Just recently, our eldest daughter, Rebecca, got married to a young Turkish guy. Regarding uh, the court cases, um, we are waiting for the Ministry of Interior to present uh, their reasons why they see us as a threat to national security to the court. Other than that, uh, the government has uh, cancelled uh, mine and Ali's residence permit which means that whenever we run into a traffic control, we might be arrested. And probably in most countries, also we cannot meet in the church right now due to the, uh, due to the crisis, but um, we have our church services on the internet and we noticed that many more people are watching them. It's about three times as many people as would come to the church. Not only in our church, but also in, in any other Turkish church, we realize that more and more people get interested and want to know more about the Christian faith. So we are trying to uh, be more present uh, on the internet and try to, uh, to bring out the gospel in an impacting way. Also, uh, news from the refugees um, due to the Corona crisis, they are in a very difficult situation right now. Um, they were the first to lose their jobs and they don't know how to pay their rent. They don't know how to pay for food. We heard about someone uh, in Van who was two days without food. And uh, the church, as a church, we try to to help uh, in those uh, urgent needs, paying rent, uh, visiting people with uh, food uh, baskets. Um, but it's a, quite a challenge, uh, and we don't know how long we can continue this. Also for our retreat center, this is a challenging time because due to the crisis, all groups have canceled. So we have no income at all. But of course, we need to pay um, pay our workers there and pay uh, taxes and everything. So this, the, uh, this is going on. So we have really financial challenge um, there. But as a church, we have decided not just to look to ourselves, but uh, we see this as a chance to bless the community. And we have asked the municipality to give us a list of people that are in need. And uh, now teams of Turkish believers are going um, and visiting those people. Uh, the months of Ramadan, the fasting month has just begun. And uh, the people are so amazed that they see uh, Christians from the church coming by and bringing them food packages and blessing them. And the people who are standing around are asking a lot of questions. So this is a, a great opportunity to make the name of Jesus great in, in our city. Um, yes, uh, we had a wonderful uh, time of prayer. Uh, we had planned to have prayer and fasting in one location where all the New Frontiers churches would have come together. Due to the crisis, we couldn't do this, but uh, every church produced a video with uh, their prayer points and for one week every evening we were praying for a different church and that has given us uh, a lot of joy and I think a lot of things could have been moved in the spiritual realm. And for the end of July we have planned to have a um, retreat together with all the New Frontier churches in Turkey and we really hope that we don't need to cancel that, that we can have this together. So please pray. Um, that Ali and me can stay in the country. Please pray that um, the refugees who are in a very difficult situation uh, can be helped and that they find work again and can support themselves or that God provides um, supernatural. Please pray that uh, all the things we are putting on the internet really will touch uh, the Turkish people, and that also this um, help um, activity with the food baskets will open many hearts um, for the gospel. Please pray that we 
can have our New Frontiers Turkey gathering end of July. Thank you so much for your love, for your support. We really miss you. I hope I can come and visit you soon. God bless you. Well, welcome uh, to another Open Door service on YouTube. My name's Adrian, and uh, we're going to look at another passage that Jesus spoke about seeds. And uh, so I'm in the in the shed. I've been out looking at the seeds and see how they're doing in the garden. Uh, some lettuces coming up, uh, some beetroot, and uh, looking forward to those coming later in the year. But also there's some other greenery appearing that I, that I didn't plant. And uh, as you look closely, you think, oh no, it's the dandelions, or it's a bit of nettle. And uh, there's, uh, there's a real wisdom. Sometimes you, we pull now, but we might pull up the other seeds with them. And uh, this is the, uh, the type of picture that Jesus is using in the parable this morning. So we're going to look at uh, Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 24, where Jesus tells this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and he went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. So the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in the field? Where's all of these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. So the servants asked him, Do you want us to go round and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling up the weeds, you might also root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I'll tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. So there's a story. Uh, last week we heard about uh, four different fields, one seed. This year, this uh, week, we're looking at uh, two different sorts of seeds, two sowers, but one field. And uh, the disciples like us were thinking, Jesus, could you give us some uh, clue of what you were meaning? So we can then read Matthew 13, verse 36. Helpfully, Jesus uh, tells them what it meant. He left the crowd. His disciples said to him, can you explain this parable of the weeds? So he answers, the one who sowed the good seed, he's the son of man. Jesus is talking of himself. The wheat is the world, not the church. But it's the world. So the field is the world. The good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are sons of the evil one. The enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send out his angels. They will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They'll throw them into the fiery furnace where they'll be weeping, gnashing of teeth, and the righteous will shine in the, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. You say, yeah, Jesus, uh, I've got it. I want to hear. I've got ears. I want to hear uh, what you're saying. So as I say, two sowers, two seeds, uh, one field of the, the world. Uh, the enemy comes. He sows weeds while the people are sleeping. He seeks to disrupt the crop. The servants wait, they want to take action, but Jesus, the Son of Man, says, wait for the harvest. So let's take a closer look at one or two of the details and just trust that the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. So first of all, the seeds are not words this time, they're people. They're people of the kingdom, they're followers of Jesus. Maybe you and I, as we follow Jesus, we see ourselves too as seeds. They're those who live under the good rule of the King of Heaven. The followers of Jesus, you see, live with that sense of being sown. Jesus uh, spoke of himself that he had been sent. He'd been sown into the world. He came as a servant. He was sown. And now he sends us too. We mentioned last week the passage from John 20 where Jesus says, As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you, receive the Spirit, be sown, be sown into the world. And then it talks of the field, the field is the world, it said his field. You know, the sowing that Jesus does is into 
his world. This world is his. He is the king of it. He's filling it with his good seed. The seed is spread all over the world. And we saw just earlier of one place in the Middle East where that seed is spreading. You see, the world belongs to Christ. It's his. Even before the sowing, the world was his. He's populating it now as his rightful place. It's always his intention to fill it. Back in Genesis chapter 1, the, the command of God to mankind is fill the earth. Be seeded, be fruitful across the earth, fill it. It's the same thing in this passage. The disciples didn't have much of a clue though. And sometimes maybe we think, God, how is this working out? The disciples thought God was wanting to like uh, rescue uh, Israel from the Romans. But God had a plan. Jesus had his plan was to fill the earth. You know, God's plan is much bigger than we realise for our lives. It's to be fruitful where we're planted, but it's to fill the earth. God has a plan to fill the earth with his people, you and I. Back to in Genesis, we read the same promise of fruitful seed given to Abraham. The promise was that his seed would be a blessing to all nations. That was fulfilled in Jesus and through us as we fill the nations with Jesus. In us, we are fulfilling the prophetic promise given to Abraham. So through, through Jesus, you and I are the seed. You and I are a planting of the Lord. But then Jesus in this parable says, an enemy comes. No explanation, no great detail. It says the enemy. We might want to boo in the story at this point. The enemy, he says, is the devil. He's the imposter. He comes to disrupt the crop. He's a thief. He's a destroyer. He comes to lie. He wants to disrupt the sowing that God is about. And we might look at the world like his servants and, and see, God, how come? It's not... Why is it like this? It's not meant to be like this, we, we feel. We, we raise a voice. How come evil seems to prosper? Like the psalmist, we say sometimes that evil seems to flourish. That's because the enemy comes to sow. The Bible explains that he has come to disrupt. We can have confidence in the end of the story, but that at this time, Jesus says the enemy is sowing. And he's sowing as people are sleeping. So I want to encourage each of us. Are we sleeping or are we alert? Elsewhere, Paul, the Apostle Paul encourages us, be watchful, be alert, be prayerful. Friends, let's live at this time watchful. Let's live at this time ready, responding to his word, the word of Jesus, listening to him. Let's not be caught sleeping. Let's be alert for what he's saying and speaking into our lives. Let's be prayerful. But now the servants, they're indignant. They're seeing these weeds growing. They say, we want to pull them up. Let's rush out. Let's get rid of the weeds. But Jesus says, wait, wait. And uh, the, you see, the enemy does not have free reign. The enemy is not Lord of the earth. He's not the maker of creation. The one in charge of the field, the one in charge of the harvest says, wait, I will have my time so friends i want to encourage us as jesus says the same to us and we think god when he when 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 he says wait there will be a harvest there will be a moment of breaking in of the angels into our worldly system there will be an end but servants at this minute don't get focused on the weeds don't get focused and rushing about where what about the weeds friends i want to encourage us also to lift our eyes to the one who sows. Lift our eyes to the good sower, the one who is Lord of the field. I want to encourage us not focus on the weeds around. As the prayer letter says, let's be thankful. Let's uh, not be anxious, but be thankful. We can be thankful as we look at the good sower. Let's not be weed focused. Let's be kingdom seed focused. You see, Jesus is more concerned by the harm of pulling up these weeds. What a heart of compassion. You see, actually, we all have began our lives as weeds 
if you like, in the kingdom. We weren't in the kingdom of God. Maybe God has called you recently to follow him. He's taking you out of, your, if you like, of the dominion of the evil one. He's placed you in his kingdom. We were once weeds, but now we are seeds. We're a planting of the Lord. So here's a few things uh, as I finish uh, that I think that God wants to speak to us from the story. First of all, stay engaged. Stay engaged. Stay focused. Remember who you are. You're a planting and a sowing. I'm one of the kingdom kids. I'm one of the people of his kingdom. I've been sown and planted. As a follower of Jesus, you have dignity right where you are now. You've been placed, you've been sown like the seeds in my garden. They're not just liberally scattered. They're planted in a row with care, the right amount of soil and, uh, and hopefully very, uh, very fruitful. But you have been planted by the master gardener. You're a sowing of the Lord. We see even in the early church we've mentioned before about their scattering and uh, even with that scattering, they were aware they were planted. This is what it says in Acts 11. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, they travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, Antioch, right over the Middle East, spreading the word only among the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, they went to Antioch and they began to speak to Greeks also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. And they bore fruit. The Lord's hand was with them. A great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Initially uprooted, scattered, but now they were uh, bearing fruit. Now, okay, we've been sown, we've been planted. We're in Antioch now, and we're going to break out. We're going to speak of Jesus cross-culturally. What will it look like for you to see your place of work, your street, as a place of God's fruitfulness for you. Not as a place to, oh, get me out of here, but what if, Jesus, you showed me, I've been sent here, I've been planted into this business, this school, this place of employment, this street with these neighbours, because you've planted me here to bear fruit. Stay engaged. We encourage you previously to stand at the front window and look left and look right and look over and ask ourselves, Jesus, would you show me how would you like me to bear fruit in this place? Why have you planted me here? What is it? How would you want to express yourself through me? You know, the early church were focused on being sown and sent. They weren't focused on pulling weeds. You know, we have permission to get out there, to be fruitful, to be on mission, to fill the earth. So stay engaged. Secondly, let's not be overcome by pulling up the weeds. Let's be on that. Let's be focused on the honor of the one who gives growth and fruitfulness. Focus on the good father who sows, who waters, who tends his seed. Don't get caught up focusing and identifying all the weeds. We're sent to bring life. We're given the spirit of fruitfulness. May we be abundantly fruitful in our lives this week. And then thirdly, let's practice tolerance and patience because we anticipate the harvest. The servants wanted to rush out and pull up the weeds. The master says, wait for the harvest. It will come. Now there is a mystery. There is an ache in the waiting, but let's wait with patience. Let's wait with joy. Let's wait with trust that the one who oversees the field will bring all things together, will glorify Jesus as head over everything will gather his harvest, will make amends for all the unrighteousness. There will be a payday coming up at the end of the age when Jesus returns, when the false kingdom will be destroyed and God's kingdom gathered in. Let's have an eternal hope filling our hearts, not just a hope for one another, but a hope of the king returning to the whole earth, filling it that all nations will belong to him, that all nations uh, will glorify and honour Jesus. We're part of that story. You see, Jesus is more into expansion than extermination. He's more into expansion than extermination. He wants to expand the kingdom, but let's wait. Let's be patient as he does that too in an open door 
as we follow his plans, as we are scattered across uh, the, uh, the region, the locality. Jesus has sent us, you see. He's not sent us into a building. He sent us into a field, the world. So Dave and I, we've been praying this morning. We pray that we will know as a church that sense of being sent. We're scattered. We're gathered, but we're scattered. We're gathered to receive a strength and nourishment. And then we're scattered into places where we spend six and a half days of our lives. We're scattered in our streets, our homes, our workplaces. We pray for that this season will find a fresh sense of faith, a fresh sense of life in God through us in the place that we've been planted. So why don't we ask Jesus, will you show me where you have sown me and how you have sown me? How, Jesus, will you bear fruit through me? What is the way that you have made me to be fruitful in this place of work, in this place where I live? You know, it's your shape and style, uniquely given to you by Jesus, that he so wants to release upon the planet. So we pray that there is a, a sense of sowing on us today. We pray, Holy Spirit, would you come? I pray, come upon us, Lord, a sense of momentum and growth in us as we see we're rooted and sown by you in these places. Oh God, forgive us where we're wanting to pull out and get out. May we know a sense of being planted by you, the King. You're the King of the whole field. Come upon us, Jesus, with fresh faith for our communities that we see. Jesus, we ask you, how do you want us to bear fruit in this, in this town, in this village, in this, um, in this street? Oh God, give us fresh grace like the disciples to see this is much bigger than us. Your plan is to fill the earth with a fruitful crop. Uh, there will be an abundant harvest. Jesus, we capture your sense again of being sent people. You say, go into all the world, make disciples. Help us, Lord. Help us in this time. Help us in this time to know your grace, your anointing that flows, that bubbles out of us with life. Oh God, we ask you now, would you draw near to us? As we wait on you, as we ask you these questions, well, we want to be fruitful. You've called us, you've put fruitfulness in our hearts. You've appointed us to bear fruit. So I pray, Holy Spirit, come, come upon us. You know, as you're watching this, uh, maybe you're in a different nation. It was great uh, just last week to chatting to a couple who are living in Germany who responded to a prophetic word. Um, that we brought uh, a couple of weeks ago um, about their future. And uh, so I want to invite you uh, to uh, get in contact with us. Wherever you're watching, we'd love to hear from you. You can use the contact uh, details at the end of, uh, of this video. But maybe as you're watching too, I wonder if you have been having heart pains and angina. Uh, I just have a sense that Jesus is wanting to touch uh, heart pain um, physical heart pain with his healing powers. I pray, I speak, if there's abnormal rhythm, if there's heart pain, angina, I speak. I say, let there be order in the heart. Let there be a fully functioning heart muscle, uh, freedom from heart pain uh, for you. And two, I just have a, uh, a sense that maybe you're a lady who's watching and you've been suffering from depression um, and this isn't because of the, the virus, but this is depression uh, because of a lost, uh, a lost child. Maybe you had a miscarriage. Uh, maybe you had an abortion. Uh, and just, I, I just sense that Jesus' grace is close to you to bring some healing. So I just want to invite you to, to ask him, Jesus, would you come and heal the, this, this, the memory, uh, the pain um, of that moment, of that season in your life? Jesus, would you come and cl be close? Would you show me where were you in that pain? Where were you as I went for that, um, that abortion, that operation? Uh, Jesus, I just need to find a, a, a way through this pain that still echoes in my life. We pray that you'd know uh, the peace uh, of Jesus. Bless you and uh, have a great week.